Oh, hey guys, nice to have you back to MBT Craft. My name is Escor, and I just entered this door to my local bank. And I beg you, please be quiet because I don't want to draw any attention. Um, there's gold inside there, and <laughs> I want to make some money, so I want to get that gold. And I have my book with me, um, which is definitely not not a criminal book, and it tells me. Um, the super secret code which is 3842 and let's go over here and type it into the board um, as you can see I'm locked on the board and I now have to enter the code um, okay nice <laughs> good job good job let's go ahead quiet quiet pick up that gold yes oh you know what I feel bad I actually I'm not a criminal I think I think I will leave the gold here and leave let's close the door too um, okay I think if I might enter some kind of wrong code the door will close again and yeah, let's leave. <laughs> okay, guys, um, <laughs> my acting was very, very cool again. I think. <laughs> um, um, yeah, um, that's what I've been working on um, for the last two days, I think. And it's pretty cool. And I show to you how it works. Okay guys, um, so basically I'm just using the piston extension blocks again um, from my latest video. Um, and I also have done um, something cool with maps, because this is a map of course. Um, and as I walk over here, you can see that I have the map with me, um, which is this. And you might ask how I've done this and I will put the link into the description because there is a program uh, that can uh, create uh, maps out of images so I, I've done this in paint um, this is uh, 128 by 128 pixels and yeah then I put the map on an item frame and it looks like this and I put the piston extension block in front of it and if I click it um, the piston extension block will disappear and yeah and based on the direction that I am looking, um, the numbers will be pressed. <laughs> and yeah, I'm teleporting. So as soon as I click right here or something um, somewhere where the piston extension block will disappear, and I'm looking uh, into the direction of the board, um, it will then teleport me um, onto a specific location in front of the board. And now, even if I walk, I can't get out. I can't look some somewhere else. Even if I turn around really fast, <laughs> I will just um, have my my cursor at the uh, number pad again. And now I really have to press the buttons, otherwise I can't exit this again. <laughs> and uh, yeah, okay, let's enter something wrong. And yeah, I'm free to go. And as you have seen, there was no sound because um, the door uh, status did not change; it did not open or it did not close. And it's pretty cool um, to have um, this done. At first, I was thinking about um, making it just look like you're um, standing in front of one little block, but would have done actually um, nine blocks, and you get teleported somewhere else as soon as you click right here. And there should be nine piston extension blocks. And yeah, but it works with one, and it's pretty cool. <laughs> and. Yeah, you might ask why there's no zero. I, I actually just forgot the zero somehow. <laughs> and yeah, because nine numbers and yeah, it's it's just a lot easier um, to have no zero here because it's just um, three by three and yeah, it works fine. So <laughs> and okay, um, this all works with this uh, little faster um, hopper clock and a super fast fill clock over there and the super fast fill clock is basically um, just um, teleporting me to a specific location so 
um, this is the location in front of the item frame um, and this is testing for a rotation so minimum rotation and maximum rotation which you can see on uh, F3 so now I can see the, the facing and yeah it's a lot done with facing and also it's only for the player that is currently entering the code and it will teleport the player to uh, an absolute coordinates and um, absolute uh, rotation around specific uh, specific axis axis what what's the the plural of axis x I think it's axis um, yeah <laughs> and um, yeah I've done this a lot of times so the teleporting and also I'm always teleporting the player onto the same location so he can't um, move and when he's looking into uh, outside of the frame um, yeah that's what the other commands do um, they teleport into the location and set the right angle again and yeah after that is done so now I'm inside um, the item frame all the time um, so first of all if I um, press the the right uh, the right button on the piston extension block it disappears and it will test if there's an air block um, set block to piston extension again and then it will add a code count to one if um, there's a player that has entering code minimum value of one um, and also uh, one tick later um, this will set entering code to one if a player is on a specific location and looking to the board um, and yeah so that's what is telling so as you have seen here um, here is the teleporting um, as soon as have, I have clicked uh, the item frame um, the piston extension block in front of the item frame um, it will teleport me uh, because my uh, entering code scoreboard objective will be set and so now I'm locked and on uh, here um, it will test if the entering code is already one um, and then it will reset this one and it will play random sound click so every time I click it will play the sound um, if entering code is one which is set right here and then if entering code is one um, it will add one to code count um, so code count is zero and after when I click the first time this will not be activated but the second time this will be activated because entering code is one and so now code count is one and this right here um, is for uh, every number so nine pieces one two three four five six seven eight nine and because I have four uh, a four digit code um, it has four command blocks and this command block right here is testing for um, a player that has entering code minimum value of one and a specific ro uh, rotation so um, this is one uh, number so I was looking um, that my cursor is inside that specific field um, when I click it and yeah that I've done that for every field and if score code count is one so exactly one because minimum and maximum value is one then it will set number one to one and if code count is two so I'm currently setting the second one it will set number two to one and number three and number four and yeah so I have four um, this is for every um, number and I have four uh, four digit uh, code so that's why I have uh, if I go ahead and go for scoreboard objective list you will see the objectives that I have and um, this is the reset mechanics and so I have a uh, number one number two number three number four um, entering code code count and code success and um, so now if I enter the code um, right here it will test if code count minimum value is four um, which happens after I entered four uh, numbers and then it will set a uh, code success for every player to zero and after that um, it will set code count um, to uh, this is success to zero and this is code count to zero if um, a player has code count minimum value of four so this is resetting that so I can use it again and after that it will set entering code to zero and oh no actually I think no, okay. Um, and this will test if um, if score number is three, 
score number 1 is 3 and score number 2 is 8, score number 3 is 4 and score number uh, 4 is 2 again. So and then it will set code success to 1. So here you can change um, the code that you want on the item frame. And yeah, if you did not know, if you want to, um, because these command blocks here, um, I'm always telling you this, I think, but <laughs> this is important. Um, they do not get executed at the same time, but after each other. Um, so I always, and this is changing for the direction you're facing somehow, and the count of command blocks that you use. And I'm always setting this up with say one, say two, say three, say four command blocks. Um, when I want command blocks, and then I'm just powering them, and then I will see if they have the right order. And yeah, that's the order they will get executed. And now that we have success count to one, if it is, um, if it's the right uh, code, then it will set success count to one because this is executed later than this one where it sets everyone's to zero. Um, this will reset it, and this will set it again. And yeah, if it's not set again, it will stay zero and success count is zero um, because this is happening very fast and this pulse right here of this clock um, cannot happen that fast. And then there it will test if there is a code with success count minimum value of one um, with a negation and also a normal output. And if success count minimum value is one, um, then it will fill a specific area, which are the iron bars with air and set arrow, uh, the iron bars on a different location. Also, it will play the random sound uh, door open on the location of the door um, with a volume of two, and right over here. Um, the fill and the, the air blocks are um, switched, so um, it's setting the iron um, bars to a closed door and yeah it's pretty cool <laughs> and yeah the the ira uh, the the golden bars the gold bars gold ingots um were also done with the test for block um i was testing with um invisible silver fish so you can um um collect them with left clicking and it will um, test if a player has dam damaged a uh, silverfish so you can um, collect the iron ingots for every player individually um, but yeah um, this was kind of annoying because um, silverfish always make a sound and it's also easier this way I think and yeah so I've done it the easy way and there it tests for piston extension on the ingots location. So there are also three uh, piston extension blocks. Um, when I fly right here, um, you will see that there are these black lines and piston extension blocks. And if I click a piston extension block, it disappears and it sets that to air again. And it will test for if um, there is an item um, an entity with the score gold ingot minimum value of one and yeah it's on a specific location and how I set this up was by um, this contraption here and if I press a button um, this will kill an entity with score gold ingot minimum value of one um, on the specific location so every um, piston extension is one um, spot where the gold ingot is and after that it will summon an item on this platform right here and this item has a pickup delay which is very large and a negative age um, so it will not uh, disappear and you can't pick it up manually um, and the item is a gold ingot with a count of one and it's called stolt <laughs> because it's uh, stolen gold and yeah I love puns <laughs> and um, okay, um, and this is um, the same commands. Um, so there are three ingots after that. Um, that's where there is a repeater between them. And this one over here will set um, the score, but value your gold ingot to one for um, items. Um, that are over the specific command block. So if there are three ingots, these three ingots will have set their gold ingot score to one. And after that, 
I will teleport um, ingots on a location, which is this location, this location, and this location, um, to the location um, where they are at the end, <laughs> and where you want them to be. And so if I click this, um, first they disappear, then now they are there, and then they will t be teleported up here. And yeah, there are ingots called um, uh, with a scoreboard objective of gold ingots. So now I know um, there are gold ingots. And yeah, because I'm testing for gold ingots on those locations, um, this is just three times the same but a different location. Um, if this is true and there is a gold ingot, this will turn on, um, which will then give a player um, with a radius of four to that. Uh, location where the gold ingot is, a gold ingot with the display name stalled. And then it will kill the ingot on the location of the ingot that you clicked. And um, then also this will turn on. So because there is no um, resetting of this command block, this will stay um, off. Uh, this redstone torch will stay off. And the next time there is a gold ingot, um, Nope, um, this is on, and the next time you click the uh, uh, the piston extension block, um, this will test again, and now there is no uh, gold ingot, then this will turn on again, and then this will be executed. Um, yeah, because the comparator stays on after the first time, this will uh, turn off, and after you click it again, this, will, uh, this comparator will turn off, because um, it's not true that there's a gold ingot, and this will be executed. And this right here um, will summon an item on a specific location. Um, I've done this better than this one. Um, I could change this, but yeah, it was already done and I did not really want to change it because it works. Um, but yeah, right here, um, you s I use uh, relative coordinates instead of um, absolute all the time. So I'm summoning um, for uh, it on a location um, relative to this command block 401, um, the gold ingot, like over there, um, with this blame of stole. So 1, 2, 3, 4, um, it's right over here, um, now on this location. And this is because if I press F3, um, dx, dy, and dz coordinates um, can only be positive. And in this direction, they would be negative. So I have had to summon it right here and not um, over here, for example, like the last time. And so yeah, now I can use dx, dy, and dz coordinates. And so now I'm setting um, the score gold ingot to 1 for dx2 and dy1, so 1, 2, and 1. So it's right here. And after that I will be teleporting um, the gold ingot that's right here, so dy is 1, um, to the location where it should be. And after that, which has a little delay because this takes a while, um, it will then clear my inventory um, for one gold ingot. So one gold ingot will be removed. And I think that's it. Um, yeah, you have to be careful if you uh, somehow mess it up um, because these comparators will stay on. You have to reset that them in your um, reset contraption because <clears throat> my reset contraption will remove something and add something, but um, yeah, you also have to reset um, the block data to success count zero of these command blocks, so this will not stay on, or otherwise it will um, cause some, some strange behavior. And yeah, I think that's it. Thanks for watching, and I will put. Um, examples of these commands into the description and also um, the link where you can download the program to uh, convert uh, images into maps and yeah after that you just have to um, put them into your Minecraft folder um, where your game is located and yeah you can use it it's pretty cool um, there are a lot of YouTube videos on it uh, this and yeah have fun using this, it's pretty cool. I will um pretty sure um improve this so maybe I can make it multiplayer um for multiplayers so it's um because now it's just radius four and 
Um, another player could, could also be Radius 4 and click it for you and then you get the gold ingot and it's pretty strange. But works for one player and yeah, okay, I'm already talking too long. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a nice day.